Welcome to a very special episode of About Tonight. It's the Melbourne International Comedy Festival episode coming to you live from Wurundjeri Land. I'm Jennifer Wong and apparently this is on TV. Tonight's guests are Sarah Pascoe from the UK, Vivek Mabubani from Hong Kong, The Chasers Chris Taylor and Andrew Hansen, Melbourne sketch group Wonder Women and Sydney comedians Shane Matheson and Madeline Culp. Our first guest tonight is Sarah Pascoe from the UK, back for the second time with her new show, Sarah Pascoe vs History. It's got everything from sexual evolution to history's most romantic couples to sperm. Please welcome Sarah Pascoe! Woo! Hey. Hi, Hi Jennifer. Sarah. How are you? Oh, I'm coming for a uh, hug. Awkward it's, it's, hug. It's, 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 Touch it's, all the cats. <laughs> 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 How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Welcome back. Thank you very much for having me. You're very welcome. Yeah. So pretty much this is just like QI, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. Apart from I'm getting a lot more space to talk. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Really? And how's the women quota working out for you? Oh, it's two? really great because they made it public. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, <there's laughs> everyone nothing. knows you're there because you forgot yeah, to grow a penis. That's right. Yeah. That happened to me too. Yeah. yeah. And then I also have the advantage of being Chinese. It's like hey, double, double whammy. Double. Yeah. 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 So there's yeah. two quotas you're two ticking quotas I'm ticking. Yeah. yeah. It's like in, um, there's a show here called The Bachelor. Do you guys have it in the UK? Oh, I've heard of it but not seen it. So is this one guy gets to choose between loads of women? Yeah, it's very, very unprogressive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, they say on that show all the time, like, oh, yeah, he ticks a lot of boxes for me. It's uh, like, yeah, yes. I tick two boxes. Yeah, yeah so tick one box. Yeah. We've each got a box. It's great. Yeah, it's yeah. so great. Yeah. It's really great. So what are you doing on your return visit to Melbourne, apart from the festival? Yes, like kind of things you're enjoying coming back to see? Yeah, it's so nice actually coming back to a place that you're a little bit familiar with before because you get to do a lot more exploring and you already have your favourite like juice place and coffee place yeah. and then you get to extend out. So I'm really enjoying it. Melbourne's such a perfect size city. For walking, right? Yeah, yeah to walking yeah. around and to kind of get to know it and still feel there's new places that you haven't been to before. But, so do you live in Melbourne? No, I'm from Sydney. Okay, yeah. right, so. Melburnians, Melburnians, is that right? I think we can call them that. Do you, yeah, yeah, yeah let's call them that. To Melburnians. Yeah, Melburnians. They, they need to, you to tell them how much you love Melbourne as the first thing, right? They're so proud. Well, They're I'm so glad proud. we've ticked that box. Yeah. So, so we I love just, you, Melbourne. Where, everywhere I go, it's like, yes, Melbourne's amazing. I do love Melbourne. Yeah, it is really yeah, great, yeah, but yeah. they know it, right? <laughs> <laughs> they what, know it. What, in the quality of their juice bars. Yeah, <laughs> they know. The they know. The like, yeah, keep the compliments coming. Yeah, <laughs> we know I, how good we are. It is the best time I reckon to be in Melbourne during the festival. Though. Is it? It's my. I, I think it's the my festival, favorite time. Some like so with Edinburgh, the festival takes over the city, yeah. so it's important to go there as well when the festival isn't on. Whereas I think uh. Melbourne, the, the comedy festival keeps itself to its few buildings. Yes, and yes. You yeah. can still yeah. extend yeah. out to. Well, a there, non there are millions of people places. who are not aware that comedy is happening at all. That's true. They're all the ones not at my show. Yeah. Ah, oh, just blissfully unaware. Yeah, yeah no, uh, the flags just maybe aren't selling it enough. Because they're nice. pastel blue, you know, the flags that say Melbourne International Comedy oh, Festival. Oh, yes, yeah. It's the same colour as the sky. <gasps> so it's so just it And, of course, see. the picture is a man with a bird flying yeah. out, so you might just think that's just a guy bird -like. releasing birds into yeah, the sky. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right, we sold it. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what's, what's happening. going on. Gosh, it's just all the design. That's what's going on. <laughs> so I saw your show the other night. Oh, thank you for coming. I loved it. Thank you. And I heard that you have a book coming out in March, which is very exciting, yes. next year. Yeah, so I'm writing it now. Yeah. And it was really great, because when I was researching stuff for the show suddenly I got really into yeah, as you said like the kind of the evolution of pair bonding and where monogamy comes from and I was finding out all of these things that were so fascinating but n maybe not comedic yeah. you can't make jokes about everything because yep. comedy involves flippancy and sometimes yes. you just think why be flippant about this when it's so yep. serious and great so what's so good about the book is that my, actually, my, my editor is always going, you don't have to make jokes. I'm like, really? Am I allowed? <laughs> Can I just be serious for <laughs> well, a second? Well, they still not pick yeah. on me if yeah. I don't make jokes. Yeah, and that's how I get away with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a really great experience. But the other side of it is, and you'll understand this, uh, when you're writing stuff for a new show, you go and try it out at gigs, and if audiences mm -hmm. don't like it, you find out. Writing just on your own in a room, you're only your own audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're heckling yourself. Yeah. You're worthless. You're, you're worthless. <laughs> <laughs> Who said you could do this? <laughs> I don't come into your office. And, yeah. Well, I do. <laughs> I do, and I ruin your day. Yeah. So what's something that you're writing about now that you think is um, super interesting but off limits when it comes to being flippant about? Be like um, something you wouldn't oh, so do on so stage. Things like, um, and I have, so I'm not saying that people can't make jokes about it, but yeah. something like female genital mutilation. Yes. Um, I haven't found a way of being funny about that, but it doesn't mean that I don't want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, or yeah. I think for lots of people who consider themselves feminist, when things involve other cultures, it's such a difficult yeah. area. Because yeah. actually, it was pointed out to me um, a couple of years ago that it's a form of racism to yeah. think that 
someone who's a woman from a different culture, you just ignore her experience yep. in a way that you wouldn't if she was the same colour as you or if you understood her language a bit more. Mm -hmm. So that whole thing is really, really complex. And to talk about it in an audience in a really quick way, you're going to find yourself. Everyone gets like this the minute yeah. you mention. So let's say, like, if you wanted to talk about something from the Muslim culture, like niqabs, yeah. everyone's going to go, right, "Where are you going with this, lady? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. a very good point that isn't destructive." It's the um, yeah. key word that makes people kind of yeah. seize up, which, already, which is good right? yeah, because yeah. people are aware that yep. there are oppressed peoples or terrible things have happened. Yep. And so if, if you're just setting up a joke, I think that's a little bit selfish as well. Mm. I mean, if I was an audience member, I'd be the kind of person going, OK, fine, but what have you really done for the world? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, apart from bring laughter to yeah, millions. Yeah. OK, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, do you reckon it says a lot also about the types of audiences and who's in the audience when it comes to comedy clubs? Oh, yeah. Because, um, you know, depending on who you're talking to. Yeah, you'll have ha all have had that experience. Like a drunk audience, it needs to be very quick and they don't care. And actually, yeah. mainly just talk about going to the toilet <laughs> or <laughs> sex please and that's all people want and then obviously in a comedy festival you have a much more cultured it's mm. more of a theatre audience yeah. where your show better have a point and some callbacks at the end mm -hmm. yep. so that don't forget to, to mention how much you love Melbourne ah, yeah. Yeah. And open and close with open Melbourne and close. I think <laughs> thank I you Melbourne <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I know that um, when I was when I was watching a show you were talking a little bit about um, about how um, like what you've realised now and what it would be like to kind of know that as an earlier version of oh, yourself. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you find that when you're like writing your stand up or um, trying to get to the point where you can talk about the things you talk about mm. that you um, uh, learn stuff about? about being a person. That's a really awkward way of asking okay, something. So what I, th I think what happens is that you, you get to fictionalise yourself. Mm. So that's what's so great about stand-up. Yeah. It's something that really makes you feel ashamed. For instance, you can contain it within a fictionalisation version of that thing. Mm. So a really horrible thing happens to you in a shop. Yeah. In real life, that thing happens, and it might become an anecdote that you tell other yeah. people, or you can tell like, these kind of lies where you thought you should have said this. But in stand-up, you said it, yeah. you said it, and then you get yeah. to write their reaction. You're in control suddenly of what, yeah. the ha what happened. You are the hero. Yeah, so yeah, in terms yeah. of learning about yourself, you could say in some ways you do, but I think it's much more lying to yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. it's much more going, ah, and I think that's the same as like, there's people, very few actually, because most comedians are brilliant like, off stage. But there's someone who I'd be like, I love their work, I love their heart, I love their soul. Mm -hmm. And you meet them and you go, oh, not as good as the persona. Fiction writer. <laughs> spend a really good fiction yeah, writer. Spend a lot of time working on the onstage person and not a lot on the right. offstage person. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what about the things about, um, you know, learning what the body is mm. actually for and accepting all yeah. the brilliant um, ways that evolution has made us into like what we are. Yeah. Like, are there things that you wish you would have known as a teenager when, you know, when you're a teenage girl, yeah. like not you, just me I, as well? I, but think, I think what I, the one thing is, I've spent such a long time, I think, and I'm not saying it's even just a female thing, I think a lot of us spend a lot of time hating our physicality. Yeah. And I think what I should have learned earlier is if someone, if society has made you think something about you is wrong, you should hate that, not yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think that's so hard to say to a teenager. But yeah. I grew up in a family where lots of people were having plastic surgery and um, uh, I grew up in Essex which is a very, and it's not completely way through, but a very kind of mm. shallow superficial place. There's a lot of fake tan, fake nails yeah. and all this kind of thing. And yeah. then yeah, you spend your 20s kind of growing out of that and I think what I've found is that the 30s is when you start going, oh, no one's looking at me anyway now. <laughs> Just give up on that and start, yeah, and it's so liberating. That's not true. Lots of people are looking at you and we can tell people where to look at you some more, Sarah oh, Pascoe, yeah. which is at Melbourne Town Hall until the 19th of April in the Powder Room and the time of your show 8 is 8.30 in Melbourne Town Hall. So don't miss Sarah Pascoe while she's in Australia because she's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Do I go back through the hole now? I don't know. It'd be like a rebirth, like yeah, a reverse yeah. birthing yeah, process. Yeah, back into the womb. Yeah, all right. See you later. <laughs> bye, bye, Thanks bye. for being born. <laughs> bye. We'll be back after the break. Coming up, we've got a very, very special guest. All the way from Hong Kong, Vivek 
Babu Bani is a comedian who's here for the very first Comedy Zone Asia as part of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, where the festival have brought out acts from Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong and India for their very first showcase here in Melbourne. Uh, please welcome a very, very special stand-up with a unique talent, Vivek! All right. Woo! Hey. Hello. Hey, How are you? Let's do an awkward, awkward hug as well. Oh, God, this uh, desk is just uh, the wrong uh, shape for it. How oh, are you? Have a seat. I'm very good, thank you. Welcome. Oh, this is fantastic. I'm loving this place. Oh, are you? It's yeah. the comfortable seating, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Finally, I'm there. Uh, oh, whoa. Fine decor. Well, oh, cool. that's never happened before. This is really before. comfortable. Nice. That's just odd. Well, yeah. that's me. I think it's time to introduce people to your new talent. I know that um, it's a talent that um, up to one billion people worldwide may share, and that is that um, you are an Indian who is able to speak Chinese. True, and it's Cantonese. It's just, Cantonese. Just to make sure that we're on the same page for everybody, they'd be like, wait, Chinese is not a language. No, that's Which true. Which one is it? Yeah, that's yeah. true. It I call it Cantonese. a superpower, so I feel better about myself. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Because the, the thing for me is that I get to go out and just eavesdrop all day. Uh -huh. But this face, just listening in, it's fantastic. Yeah, I do the same, but I do it in English. It's not the same talent, but uh, still. You yeah, take this face fools a lot get. of people. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought since um, you speak Cantonese and I speak Cantonese, it might be nice just to start speaking some Cantonese because you've actually got a show entirely in Cantonese called an Indian made in China made in China which is yeah. playing um, at the festival on the 18th of April so maybe if we just switch gears now and just see how it goes homo a ho fez ho kum ge bun san pun go mao ben dong si tang la bin de pun go lam si pun go pun go okay so now our sense of that this is going on the way though but anyway um pa you go ho dei mu sai tang zhong man um pa yin wei wo dei wei hai li de ha bin you di zi mo yin dei ko yi tai ah this is what i like the most you see you see the chinese movie you see the english movie you see the english movie it's completely different it's like this now i think the chinese movie is very good usually the english movie is very bad yeah that's all that's all that's all but if you go if you go there are some people who they actually don't speak the language but they can use some hand movements to make it more dramatic and more dramatic and they can know what we're talking about no problem okay let's talk about it now okay let's talk about Chinese words okay that's what I can't speak Chinese words I don't speak or write Chinese words but they can speak Chinese words but they can speak Chinese words no problem so you come here how do you feel about this? I've eaten a lot of things I've eaten a lot of things actually I feel very happy because it's very easy. It's very similar to Hong Kong. But I think people are very good. We have a lot of people who don't want to say that. They don't want to say sorry. They don't want to say that. 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 But in Hong Kong, people who go to Hong Kong, you have to go fast. Yes, because it's a lot of time. Yes, 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 it's a lot of time. 即係連派全單都要咁樣派咯，冇謂嘅，好逼嘅香港。係、嗯、啊，所以我連喺度搭搭地鐵啊，搭誒叮誒搭嗰啲電車咁樣。搭叮叮。係搭叮叮，啱啱叮叮嚟，呢個唔係叫叮叮嘅。搭電車。叮叮好笑咯，我哋可以講多幾次。係啊，叮叮咁睇啲字幕咁啊 ，He's taking the 叮叮。即係呢個係咪係咪唔講得嘅咩？叫叮叮嘅咩？係啊係，即係其實基本上我係慣咗一個好逼嘅 lifestyle 咁樣，咁啊變咗就我嚟到呢度，我覺得哇咁多空位嘅。點解可以坐喺個餐廳坐低，唔需要即刻走嘅？點解咁咧？所以就可能因為佢哋冇乜生意咯。係啊係，可能係啊，覺得你繼續坐咯，我想俾人覺得有人未食嘢咁樣。尤其是你係唔係華人？係啊係啊，同埋我最中意就去啲誒，即係去唐人街嗰度，就無端端即係講下啲中文咧，啲人係覺得。我係咪頭先聽到佢講嘢咁咧？係啊，跟住我就哦、oh, ，I don't know， 唔係 ，I don't know what you're saying 咁樣。係啊係，所以我我其實好好開心喺度。係啊，所以我就每晚做 show 之前同埋之後咧，我都好中意喺條街行嚟行去啊，睇下有啲咩發生，同埋不停食嘢咯。不停食嘢，食啲好嘅。即係香港咁咯。係啊係啊。咁講下你啲誒，你做棟篤笑用中文做啦。誒，你個 show 係一個鐘頭嘅。咁喺嗰誒六十分鐘裡面，你會誒即係講啲誒關於咩嘅誒題目啊，或者啲。其實其實主要都係講我即係、就是、我嘅身份啊，咁始終我一個印度人，咁、嗯、我又識講中文，咁其實好有趣嘅，因為其實我就覺得自己一個香港人嚟嘅，但係就人哋見到我覺得，咦佢個樣唔似喎咁樣，嗯、即係有時我由細到大年我個名啲人都唔識讀過，即係我發覺好有趣就係我有一班 fans 咁樣，佢好中意我啲笑話，都有嘅都有嘅、哦，但係佢哋就唔識叫我點樣叫我咯、啊，即係諗下有班人，哇我好中意。
佢係咪咧？係咪即係好奇怪咁呢啲嘢？我以前讀書啊，誒、呃、啲老師要點名呢？咁佢哋又唔識讀我個名，咁好奇怪，即係好似我唔好意思咁咧。啲老師就咁求其嗌咁樣，咩、呃、咁我就誒得阿 Sir， 我叫咩得㗎啦咁樣係咪？即係呢啲咁嘅講緊我生活上，我發覺咦，我個身份帶到好多問題，但係其實好好笑嘅，因為始終我個樣唔同咧，人哋就有好多誤會㗎啦。有好多要求，而我係答唔到嗰啲要求，即係好似話我一個印度人咁，好多人會話：你係咪成日食咖喱㗎？呢啲咁嘅嘢，覺得嚇、嗯啊、有咩可能一個人三百六十五日都食咖喱嘅咧？係咪？即係呢啲咁嘅嘢係分享緊我，我由細到大經歷過嗰啲有趣事咯。咁、嗯、其實我就發覺，始終我身份唔同咧，就我睇嘅世界都好唔同，因為我都講過就係我有個。特別嘅功能就可以講廣東話啊嘛，係咪？咁我就發覺其實我呢個能力咧，幫到我睇個世界好唔同咯。喺香港其實係咪有好多人好似你自己咁，係可以、呃、用英文溝通、用誒、呃、廣東話溝通同埋用中文溝通，但係係印即係係印度人咯、呃？都有好多識講嘅，但我就我識寫識睇添咯。咁我就好彩，即係嚟去啲茶餐廳坐低食嘢咁樣。咁啲餐牌可能寫中文咧，我識睇咯呢啲嘢。咁、哦、你係咪翻學嗰陣時學中文？係啊係啊係。我以前就要讀啲誒本地學校咧。咁即係我哋唔單止要識寫識睇，嗰啲毛筆都要識寫咯。係、嗯、啊，所以我我係即係好有趣，就我啲中文嘅文化仲多過印度嘅文化。咁、哦、反而香港出世嘅，係啦係啦，香港出世、哦，所以就反而我翻到印度就好似覺得啊，印度幾靚喎，嚇去旅行先咁樣係咪？即係呢啲咁嘅分別咯。咁我個我個 show 主要都係想講我細到細到大生活面對嘅問題，同時就其實好好笑咯。我覺得我嘅身份帶到好多好好笑嘅情況，即係好似我每次開口講中文啲人嘅反應啊，誒、嗯呃、我想識女仔啊，誒、呃、我屋企人佢哋嘅態度同埋我生生活嘅環境嘅態度，即係好似話我啲朋友都全部都香港人嚟嘅，係咁我以我哋以前出。出街咧，成日都會俾啲警察 check 身份證嘅，但係 check 我嘅啫喎，唔 check 我啲朋友嘅咁樣。咁、嗯、我啲 friend 就好中意玩我，即係可能會話啊，阿 Fit， 我哋今次賭錢，今日你覺得會俾人 check 幾多次咁樣？覺得哇，搞錯！但係通常我都輸嘅咧，因為一定 check 到好多次㗎啦咁樣。即係呢啲咁嘅嘢咯。咁我覺得其實好有趣嘅。咁啊，不如用一個。幽默同埋好笑嘅方法去分享呢啲，好鬼口話搞錯俾人歧視咁樣咧，即係呢啲分別咯。嗯、即係好似我成日好中意講即係種族歧視呢啲咁樣嘅話題，因為好個人嘅，我覺得。即係有啲人歧視，我覺得冇所謂，你咪歧視飽咯，係、嗯、咪？咁當我哋講緊誒歧視嘅話，我哋或者誒誒、uh, uh, 轉翻用英文講、嗯。So we're talking about、um, discrimination. See very 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 deep topics. Yes, which is what we've been talking about. Not not the whole time we've been talking、yeah. about food, but you know that from reading the subtitles, <laughs> right? Um, but um, have you experienced um anything on your travels like around the world that makes you um feel a little bit um different? Um, I think what's happened for me is that growing up in a predominantly Chinese community, I was Always the one that stuck out, like、mm. the odd man out. So it's never been a problem where, like, oh, he's discriminating me again. Oh, he's seeing me differently. If anything, I like to be different. Like I always feel that if you fit in, you don't stand out. So if anything, my not fitting in is just fantastic. It just helps me just stand out. People remember me. You know,、right. so I've had people call me like, "Oh, you're a terrorist." You know, you look like a Middle Eastern. I'm like, you know, I'm Indian, right? This is very different. You know, a lot of these things where you can think think of it as like, "Oh, why are you doing that to me? What have I done to you?" You know, where I'm thinking that's hilarious. So you've never experienced any kind of feelings of negativity, like the the upward, you know, the outward portrayal is someone who's, you know, I enjoy being different. It yeah, makes yeah. me stand out. But internally, you never feel like it's a kind of a a, a, a point of like. Well, what has、Can、happened? I mean, there have been moments. Well, I, what happened for me is that、uh, I'd always question. I'm like, am I different? This is strange. Like growing up, I was I went to an all boys school,、mm-hmm. you know, and like some of the kids raised their hands, like, oh, teacher, why is there a girl in the class? And I was like, I'm a girl. You have really bad taste, you know. And then he explained, oh, because you have long eyelashes.、Ah. So I was like, oh, I guess you know, long eyelashes equals girls. So I went I went home, took a pair of scissors, and I was gonna cut it. My mom's like, no, no, don't do it, you know.、Yeah. So these kinds of things. I mean, there were moments where I wasn't like, huh, why are they doing that to me? But I'm like, okay, let me go fix it. Like maybe I just see discrimination as just a problem, and how can I fix it? And my way of fixing it is either through comedy or just being like, you know, I don't care. I say what you want to say. There have been moments where I really、uh, did not like my identity.、Uh, they were caused by women. Because they would not approach me or talk to me, because they'd be like, "Oh, this guy's so strange. Let's not talk to him."、And、there were a few years in my life when I was like, "Oh, I just wish I was just Chinese or just just normal guy," you know.、Right. But I think what has happened for me is because it was not a new thing. From the get-go, I'd always been the odd one out, so that became normal to me.、Mm. If I went to a community where I just fit in, I'd be like,、mm, "I don't like this. No one knows me." You feel bored, do you? Yeah,、think? exactly. You know, like I I feel like my life is like a the pretty girl at a club, where it's like there are no other women. And、Hold all the guys on, sorry, like. Sorry, can we clarify? Are you the pretty girl at the club? Yes. 
Let wow, me have a your moment. sense of selfies is incredibly... Let me have a moment of dreaming where I'm the pretty girl in the club. Okay, right. Like, in the point, basically, is like, she doesn't want to be like, oh, look at her, look at me, but it's kind of like, oh, I do enjoy the attention. You know, that kind of angle. So, I mean, the way I see it is that I do kind of enjoy the fact that I'm the odd one out. It helps me deal with life and it makes, makes every day interesting to me. Whereas comparatively, if I was just like, everyone's very nice to me, being like, oh, hi, sir. I'd be like, come on, let's have some, let's be humans, you know? Let's make fun of each other. So I think it drives me, if anything. So I, 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 I'm not anti-discrimination. I'm not pro-discrimination. I'm like, just say what you want to say. Okay, All right? great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Vivek. We look forward to seeing your show. You can catch Vivek's show, An Indian Made in China, on the 18th of April in Melbourne Town Hall, playing at 4.30. And you can also catch Vivek with four other great comics from Asia in Comedy Zone Asia, playing every night at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock on Sundays at The Regent, also in the Town Hall. Stick around because we've got heaps of cool people coming up. We've got the guys from The Chaser on Channel 31. We've got Wonder Women, a local Melbourne sketch group. And we've got a very special combination of people inside a dinosaur. So yes, come back. Welcome back to the stirring sounds of the German national anthem, which was what was specially requested by the two guys who were about to join us from The Chaser. That's right, from the ABC to Channel 31. Please make very welcome Chris Taylor and Andrew Hansen. Woo! Right. Thank you. Mm. Hello. It's very Hello. nice to be here. Hello. Oh, what a great Hi. set. Difficult birth. Here, coming for an awkward hug. I just uh, dropped my mic because I'm a professional. Ah, it's so nice to be here. You too, Jen. single handed. How are you? Do you want Hi, to hug Chris. Jen? Lovely Jennifer. Oh, sorry. sorry, I'm just. I don't know if I'm just. No, yeah, I'm sure you can do it. Oh! oh sorry, I might have. It's so oh, heavy. Cool, great. So excessively I heavy. I love a good showbiz entrance. That's good. It's very slick. We that... spent four hours in your dressing room. Yeah. Like, you know, it's yeah. not very nice. The in dressing there. rooms at my. Did so you enjoy that... the catering back there? Delicious. Very good. How are you? I'm good. Was I just involved in a chaser stunt now? Can I put that on my CV? That little hug there? That... Yeah, if you want that on your CV. Yeah, yeah. Our, our, our stunts are increasingly yeah. pathetic. So. Yeah, chase a stunt. Cool. <laughs> Great. How's it going, guys? It's terrific. It's Isn't really it? good to, to be, be in at Melbourne. Channel 31. Yeah, yeah. Channel We've always 31 been um, is very nice. avid viewers, huge supporters of community my, my, radio. My wife used to, used, to community present, she used to present on 1700. Really? Yeah, she did. The 1700s, it's still on, isn't it? I'm not sure. That's a century, right? The 1700s? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's showing my age. I'm, I'm talking about... Yeah. My, wife My wife used to present to her, she went on to become one half of Hamish and Andy, but she got her so she's very beginning buff now. gear. She's very buff. She, she is. She had her top off on, on uh, the beach, I noticed, in the news this morning. Who's Hamish. That? Hamish had his top off. Is your off. wife Hamish or, yeah. or Andy? Uh, my wife was And. Um, oh, so she's actually well. only one third of the, of the duo. Oh, <laughs> she's the And. Oh. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, no, it's, no, it's really nice to be here. And, um, uh, and here, for, it's the first time believe it or not, that we've ever done the Melbourne Comedy Festival. You are such a professional, Chris. You didn't even wait for me to ask. <laughs> right. You just answered right. a question the wasn't there. Yeah. During the hug, right. I saw your questions and I just thought <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd yeah. speed it up. Do you want me to put the super up <laughs> yeah. now? Just with the, the ticket details with the and ticket all that and then we'll just leave. All right, great. Just leave so the super on screen. Guys, they're doing a show. You may have heard of them. Um, so check them out. Thanks. <laughs> is that it? Okay, no. thank you. So, no, 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 come back. So it's your first Melbourne International Comedy Festival. It is. And I've been doing a bit of reading about this. Now, Andrew, you said that it's the first time you're doing this because you think you're a prickly performer? Mm. I am. I'm not a, I've, I've never been good at being able to do stand-up. or that, That's not my type of thing because I'm not um, warm or, or likeable or anything I like that. So, so I'm better, I'm much more comfortable playing silly characters and doing silly voices and songs and that kind of thing rather than doing that sort of, uh, hey guys, where are you from? Oh, you're from Frankston. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, Did you just steal 12 people's acts? <laughs> <Just by laughs> they wiped that. off the slate. <laughs> they wiped off the slate. So I've never, I've, never been that, I've never been good at that kind of thing. But there's other kinds of stand-up and I find you totally warm and like Of the two oh. of us, he is the warm one. Oh, well, okay. yes, oh of he's course, much Chris. worse. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, so I if mean, he I'm doesn't think he's warm, then I'm really rooted. Much more charming than, than <laughs> you. But uh, that goes without saying. But, but so, yeah, so for us, our, our shows are, are more sort of theatre type shows, and the new show is almost like a play. It's, um, yep. So it's in conversation with Lionel Corn, right? Yeah. 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 And um, which one of you is Lionel Corn? 
Yeah, I play Lionel. This is what I'm trying to. I'm trying to grow a <laughs> pathetic moustache for the character, but it's not working. It's I not didn't realise that. He didn't tell me he was growing a <laughs> moustache. I just thought when in Melbourne he thought I must get hipster moustache. <laughs> well, it's it's like, like, it has two like, uses. It has two. It's, it's also for Melbourne. And, you know, you know, for the weather and the fashion and yes. all that sort of thing. It protects me. And I um, notice your socks are visible as well. So yeah, I'm, so trying to, I'm trying to do a bit addition. of that yep. to get some sock yep. happening. But um, and where did you park your fixie? Yeah, <laughs> just behind the <laughs> behind the <laughs> organic <laughs> coffee shop. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's mm. in the catering But you room, know, yeah. uh, <clears throat> Lionel Corn, I guess uh, that Andrew's playing. He's a Scotsman, oh. um, for no apparent reason other than Andrew loves doing the accent. And Badly, <laughs> yeah. I, I know, we, we've got a bit in the show about how bad my my accent actually is. But he's a, he's, he's, a he's a famous author. Uh, the, the premise of the show it's sort of a piss take of these meet the author events or in conversation events that you get at writers festivals or, or like this, like, like this, this interview. So it's like in conversation like within conversation with Lionel Corbyn. Yes. Yeah. 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 So tell just, me, how did you write it? With a pen or <laughs> <laughs> they always Quill. ask that. I've got a question. Quill. How did you write it? <laughs> we do, do ask that. We do ask that. We ask, you, what's, you, your yeah. do yes, what's, mm. what's your process? How do you write? Where do you get your ideas the from? The funny audience thing was, I don't know if I've told you this, Andrew. We always, um, Jen and I recently did a, uh, a TV show uh, recently called Plock. We were filming a, a show, which you did a guest role in as did well. A little bit. Yep. And we were having, we were shooting a scene one night and Jen was asking me, oh, what's the premise for your show? I said, oh, it's sort of a piss take of writers festivals and, you know, those in conversation events and annoying questions from the floor. And she said, oh, yeah, I've done that exact show. And oh, I no. felt mortified. I said, oh, fuck, <laughs> we've like, they've completely stolen Jen's idea. Now, I've followed a lot Sorry, of Jennifer, Jennifer Wong's Jennifer. career, Sorry. but somehow this show had escaped me. And so I feel really oh, unoriginal. Man. So That's all I right. want, I'm sure it's, it's okay. It's, I'd kind of love you so to come to see how many jokes oh. coincidentally we have borrowed so or what how much overlap there is between our is shows. you want me to get a ticket to see your show the show that you're doing which i've already done before have you seen the strap <laughs> at the bottom of the <laughs> yeah. screen that's so where you buy your tickets, buy, tickets? <laughs> buy your tickets there right yeah. there yeah. You, can, yeah. you can see your own show <laughs> see the show that you wrote <laughs> first and that we <laughs> done by somebody else <laughs> no to be fair we didn't know each other then so you wouldn't have known that you know i did this show but i do find it hilarious you know when you go to a writers festival and you see a really good conversation and then at the end when they do the questions like i kind of my body language changes <laughs> straight away just in anticipation of what's going to what, happen. What people are going to ask. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. that is it's part of the comedy crash, of the show and it? probably yep. yours too. Mm. Yep. Yeah, it's almost a, a um, genre in its, its own right, the, the yeah, Writers' yeah. Festival question. And, yep. and, and, you know, I mean, not everyone goes to these things, but it, whenever we describe the show to people, um, most people immediately know what we're talking about. You, you only have to have been to one of these things. You go, oh, those things where there's always someone who gets up and hogs the mic for four minutes and doesn't even ask a question, just wants to volunteer their own yeah, thoughts. Yeah. There's on not a question mark involved in the whole <laughs> amount of words <laughs> yeah. that they say. Um, yeah. So, look, you know, and this is a bit of a an, an exorcism for us in a way, or for me, because I've had to host these things for real, like kind of being the serious moderator, and I always feel really... <laughs> fraudulent and uncomfortable doing them. So this is a chance to expunge all that guilt and an just exorcism. take the piss out of it. An exorcism sounds very extreme. I mean, that involves chundering and... and Anything uh, to sell the show. Your head <laughs> spinning around. I mean, that's... Well, tonight's show, I, prom I will be chundering. Oh, OK. Well, I'll Don't sit in the first row. I will be chundering my chunder. guts out as part of a, an exorcism of... You, you heard it here. As a moderator, mm. have you ever jumped in and actually had to cut someone off for time reasons to wrap their question up or turn it into a question. Oh, okay. I just want to interrupt you there. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, Was that question too long? long? Yeah. Sorry. We don't Sorry. quite have time no, to, no. to delve into yeah. uh, all that. Well, what I really liked about this interview was, uh, first of all, you covered um, your <laughs> relationship <laughs> uh, with yeah. each other yes. and then we briefly went, um, yeah, you know when they do the summary? They yeah, do they the do summary. sum up. Yeah, yeah, I really liked yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I went to one um, a couple of years ago. You know the actor Michael Serra? Yes. From yes. Arrested Development yep. and Juno and stuff. He was performing a play in Australia and they did a QA with the cast afterwards. And it was the most excruciating QA I've ever been. Like, there were people getting up, like young sort of Juno type fans, and just go, um, Michael, how do you act? <laughs> like, how, what? What's what's the pro? How do you how do you learn your lines? It was just really inane and that kind of thing. What so did he say? How does he act? I'd like to know. <laughs> he didn't know. It's that's a very hard question to answer. How does anyone does, act? Yeah. Like it's a general question. How does one not that? act? Yes, no. Like, that's I, true. I pretend yeah. to be so. <laughs> 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 
Well, I saw Paul Hogan had a funny thing to say about that acting. That was what, what he told his kids about what he, what he does for a living. And he, he said he didn't feel very proud saying to them, I pretend to be somebody. <laughs> right. wow. That's a summary of his, yep. of his life. Yeah. Yep. Kids that, should that's love what it is. that because that's, that's what kids do themselves. Well, they do. They? Yeah, it's play. It's just not growing Maybe up. Maybe it's regarded it? as something an adult shouldn't do, but I think that's the it lovely thing many, about the comedy many. festival. You see a lot of adults who refuse to acknowledge their ad adulthood. No, that's, that, it angers some people. It angers a lot of people. I get told to grow up all the time. Do you get do this you? As, a, as, a, as a comic? Do you get told, uh, grow up? I get that all the time. On Twitter, people are tweeting grow me back. Up. Grow up! As if that's the most fun thing you could do in life. Oh, we're all waiting. We're all hoping to grow up because how happy does that make you? That's yeah. the other reason you're trying to grow a moustache, just to look older and well, more I'm distinguished. Trying, yeah. Yeah. It's because they've been tweeted at to grow up grow so up. many times. Yeah. I, th this is all I can do. Is this yeah. <laughs> that's a normal adult response as well, isn't it? Someone has a go at you on Twitter and you don't well, shave yeah. <laughs> well, that, as a response. Yeah, that that yeah. is how I respond to most criticism. I yeah. grow, I grow moustaches. You know, <laughs> I, I, I've had arguments with, with people, moustache. Appears, you is know, November an ang angry time for you? Just oh, so furious! Yeah. That that is just a month of yeah. and he hates blood boiling. So he gets so angry with the whole month oh. that he, ironically, <laughs> yeah, 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 a huge yeah, yeah. moustache. I hate forming. charity. I, it, it, <laughs> I hate supporting circle. depression. <laughs> yeah. when I vicious circle. I mean, God. Ah, mm. oh, horrendous. Cranking a mo is what I've heard it's called now. Cranking a mo. I'm too old uh, to apparently. know what that means. Cranking. I'm mo. far too old, but I did hear a cool young person say say about somebody who had an awesome moustache. Yeah. Oh. I love I love that Michael's walking around cranking a mo. <laughs> I think cranking a mo would sound great in Lionel Corn's Scottish accent. Cranking. <laughs> but you see, there you go. It sounds like a legitimate, in his terrible a legitimate accent. thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, do you have audience people who can ask questions in your show in conversation? A lot of the show is pre-recorded bits of the audience asking terrible questions, right. you know. It's, it's yeah, I, I don't know how you did it when you did the show, Jen. Um, yeah, was that your we, version? Of sort of, <laughs> it's funny, it's a good question. I had some questions being asked. Yeah, we, yeah. Mm. When we began devising it, we assumed we would go open, uh, throw the floor open to actual punters. Yep. Um, what we've worked out is, it, 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 in, in the trials, it kind of was very confusing when we were talking to real audience and fake audience. I so we've, it's kind of, it's all, they're all scripted. And they're all on audio files, so we don't go to the audience. There's no audience You're absolutely welcome to ask a question. If you want well, to ask, really want go to. for it, but we never... Oh, ask a question. Why did you steal my show idea? <laughs> <laughs> How yeah. much Sorry, percentage Jeff. of our royalties do you want? <laughs> no, it's all right. okay. uh, next year we're going to come back and do the show you're doing this year. <laughs> Great. How is your show going? It's going way? okay, thank you. Thank you. I haven't seen it yet, sorry. That's right, we're on at the same time. Oh so I know, it's, it's, it's impossible. Pain, isn't it? mm. It's impossible, but mm. thank you for asking the question as someone who's in the chair being interviewed. That's very polite. And did, did you feel when you did your Writers Festival parody that everyone found it as niche and esoteric as we're finding? There's, a, there's an audience of about three people who understand all the references. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I think the fact that you use niche and esoteric <laughs> suggests who should go to the niche. show. Right. If you yeah, like the maybe. words niche and esoteric, That's you will enjoy it. Yeah, it's just a t-shirt saying esoteric. <laughs> I, I'm esoteric. <laughs> I'm esoteric. I am esoteric. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for taking time out to come and talk. Thank you. Can yeah. I go and really refill that now? You go can back, go, go and change the outfits again in the dressing Please room. Please oh, do. The trailer is all that. yours. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Please for having us. Please catch The Chaser Guys in In Conversation with Lionel Corn every night, 7 o'clock at the Forum until the 19th of April. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Jen. Coming up, we've still got lots of things. Two comedians trapped in a dinosaur gut and also Wonder Women, three Melbourne women who are taking on the world one travel story at a time. That trapped in a dinosaur gut one. We should do that next year. That's Let's that's do that. Idea. It's a really good idea. Let's do that. Yeah. Chris and Andrew trapped in a dinosaur, dinosaur gut, gut 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon Clive Palmer would lend us one of his dinosaurs? Oh, he'd be reluctant to part with those. Yeah. I we think, could, they're, what about I think they're pretty precious to him. <laughs> we could be trapped in Clive Palmer's gut. That, that's well, it's too, that's a very big set. Very expensive. You'd have to play like Ace Arena. I think you'd, you or could have an aeroplane in there. You'd have an aeroplane in there, like a hangar. Oh, yeah. You could do just a show with Clive Palmer where you guys are like just ambulating around and call it Walking with Dinosaur. Hey. You are the queen of puns. <laughs> you are the queen of puns. I thought we were going to get through the whole interview with no pun. We got one. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I just spilled myself. That's lots of pun. <laughs>
Ah, packing is hard. Someone help! Help! Did somebody say packing help? Um, actually, allow I... me to introduce myself. I'm Travelator, the travel hacking superhero. Huh. Looks like you could use my help, Josie. Uh, it's Susie, and yeah, I fly to Bali tomorrow, and, and I can't get everything to fit. Ah, that old chestnut. People have been struggling with this concept since the invention of travel in the 1950s. <sighs> but the results are in, yeah. and it's rolling, not folding. <sighs> OK, rolling. Got it. Oh, it's not fitting. It's like my bag isn't big enough. That's because that's your toiletry bag. Ow! Here, try using this. OK, thanks. All right, do that. Put the passport ah! in. It is my solemn duty to inform you that you must always store your passport securely for easy passage. Huh, that's easy. I put stuff up my butt all the time. You are an ambassador for your country. Thanks. <laughs> Remember to pack a towel. OK. You'll need it for when you mop up your tears, realizing how truly alone in the world you are. Oh. And don't forget your extra, extra towel. OK. You'll need that for cleaning up miscellaneous bodily <laughs> fluids. <laughs> OK. Just pull that. Ah! Rolling, not folding. <sighs> You're not listening. <sighs> what if I get on the plane and there's children there? I hate children. Help. Pack. Valium. <laughs> Wrap them up like lollies and hand them out to ah, nearby children. Great idea. Oh, but what if they're my own screaming children? Children are hard. Well, you know what they say. Children are an independent woman's excess baggage. <laughs> no, who said that? Me. Oh. Check those pesky kids as excess baggage for your flight. Just remember, fat kids cost more. Huh, tell me about it, empty wallet. Well, looks like I'm done here. OK. Up, up, oh, wait, 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 wait. What if I get to Bali and there's culture there? Culture is hard. Looks like I'm not done yet. When in doubt, pack us a wrong. It's so versatile. It can be a skirt and another skirt. Wear it as a turban for offending local genies. <laughs> OK. Just remember, when you wear it, you'll fool anyone into thinking that you're cultural. Got it. Cultural. Ah! Rolling, not folding. You're just not even listening at all now. Listening is hard. Well, I must be off. Okay. I have to catch a flight. Uh, Get it? Catch a flight. I'm wearing a cape. No. <laughs> Jokes are hard. Well, my stupid little friend, oh. I'm out of here. Up, up, and away. Uh, but wait, wait, Travelator, do I pack one sock or two socks? I cannot hear you, for I am up. So high! Oh, all right, thanks, Travelator. I'll be sure to fold everything, just like you said. Rolling, <sighs> not folding! Packing is hard. <laughs> thank you, thank you, that is all. Woo! Wow. Lauren. That was so cultural. <laughs> I loved it. Lauren Vaughn, yes. Chelsea Hughes, hi. Oh, hello. hello, awkward. We get to have hugs. Awkward hug. Yeah. Awkward hug. Welcome. You've travelled so far to come here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hi, Lauren. Hi, hi. How are you? I'm really good. How, How are you? See, guys, I'm well, thank you. So before we before we move on, I just have to note um, the superpowers that you have when it comes to travel. Uh, Lauren always gets upgraded to business class. I do, yes. yeah. And Chelsea, please introduce your own anti-mugging fists of glory. That's right. That's <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Sure. Thank you. Um, Thanks for having me. Me, well, us, thank you for the opportunity for all it's of us to be, be here. Yeah. It's so great to be here. I know <laughs> we're missing one member of Wanda Women today. Megan yep. McKay can't be here because she's off on a travel adventure of That's her right. own. Yeah, she does it all um, time. But um, she's at your shows, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, she better be. Yeah. She <laughs> would better get there in time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how did this uh, travel-themed sketch thing come about? Have you oh. guys just been everywhere? It's a good question. Um, we're, we're all passionate about travel, so that's one thing that brought us together. But um, we all just really wanted to do a show um, about something that we're passionate about and something we know a lot about and something we all do stand-up comedy. So we all do make jokes about it as well. So it just made sense. Um, yeah. I mean, you, you and Megan, Chelsea and Megan sort of had the idea first mm -hmm. yeah. and then they decided they need a third one and possibly a blonde one. So that's right. why right. I came into the picture. But in fact, we were a little bit marred by the fact that throughout the entire writing process, we've all been away for really large chunks at Traveling. a time. So <laughs> Megan went to South America and then you went down to Tassie, I went to Perth and Adelaide for comedy, and by the time we came back, we're like, right, so should we write the show now? We've got, oh, we've got enough time. Plenty of oh, time. Yeah, fine. So yeah. what, um, 
I'm curious to know because everyone's got them. What travel horror stories oh. made it into the <laughs> inspiration for for this whole thing? Um, yeah. yeah, off I go. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably my biggest horror story um, was being in China over Christmas in 2009 um, and being taking an overnight train from Beijing to Shanghai and getting incredibly sick. So um, I got something on that train and I was ill for about two weeks and I was also apparently a little bit pregnant. So like a <laughs> thumb, like a thumb's worth of pregnant. Wow. Um, and That's how you so get So I was pregnant, having morning right, sickness almost. and yeah, at the yeah. same time in the middle of winter in Shanghai. So that was pretty much the worst time of my life. Yep. Yeah. I I uh, I did the missing of flights. I missed a flight from uh, from Tokyo to Shanghai, and it was really it was like four in the morning, and we had to reschedule it for the next week. Uh, so we had to spend another week in Tokyo, which was great. Uh, but then we had to get up at four o'clock in the morning. Then, and there mm -hmm. were Tokyo tremors. That, well, I thought there was like uh, oh. earthquakes, but in fact, it was just wind. And our flight, that was the most like interesting uh, takeoff yeah. I have ever had. <laughs> wow. Like the guy next to me started crying, and I had to like like pat him down from it. Well, yeah. being like pretty white knuckled myself, I'm like it's gonna be fine. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was. Yeah, that's what travels yeah. for. Yeah. yeah. What are the making like, friends? Yeah, totally. Like the <laughs> please be quiet. Straight um, what are the um, you know universal things that people are really um, responding to in the show? Like I've seen a bit of your stuff before with Kentucky. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think the one that's really hitting home at the moment is a uh, is a, a couple that's having a fight on a roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, the name of the sketch is Emotional Roller Coaster. Yeah. Uh, and it has a pretty interesting ending. So I think there's a lot of people to re that relate to you know when yeah. you travel with a partner or with like a loved one, yeah. and you just get to a breaking point, yeah. and it can be in a really inconvenient yeah. spot. Mm. I think also there's um, there's a sketch that's about sort of a take on fashion police. Yeah. Um, but it's for tourist clothing. <laughs> So, yeah, or so style. Like, so, as you can imagine, <laughs> there's zip off cargo pants, cornrows, yeah. like yeah. all that sort of ponchos stuff. Ponchos and around. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. When so. you go overseas and you're like, I can wear this at home. And then you get home and you're like, did I have an aneurysm? When yeah. I was <laughs> That's fabulous. Yeah. Um, we've got to leave it here, I think, but we can't say bon voyage and goodbye without getting like a top travel tip from each of you guys because I know you guys I got are it. experts. All right, mine is, um, if your child is crying on a plane, um, pass the child around to other passengers for them to hold and maybe take home. Yeah, oh, so yeah. that's mine. Laura? My biggest travel tip, and I really think that everybody can relate to it, and it's one of those one things that's like, I mean, it's a little bit complicated, bring clothes. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Always dress, mm -hmm. dress for success. Dressing. That's yeah. right. Thank <laughs> you so much for joining us. Please catch Wonder Women at the Portland Hotel, six o'clock every night until the 19th of April, five o'clock on Sundays and no shows on Mondays. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bon voyage, Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Au revoir. Cheers. Um, <laughs> coming up, stick around because we've still got two comedians to go. Unfortunately, they've been having a not so great comedy festival trapped inside a dinosaur, but find out why when we come back. Welcome back to About Tonight. Now we all know that the comedy festival can bring a lot of joy to the city of Melbourne, but there is a serious side. Two Sydney comedians have found themselves this festival in dire circumstances, trapped inside a dinosaur. When they were brutally swallowed earlier, they found themselves in the guts of the dinosaur, and yet they've found the strength to continue to perform their kids' show every day at the Melbourne Town Hall. We cross now live to them to see how they've been holding up. Shane and Madeline, can you hear me? Oh, yes, yes, hi, Jen. Yes, hi, Jen. Hi, how's hi it, we can hear you. How's it going in there with the, the terrible situation that you've found yourself in this festival? It's pretty hard, isn't it, Shane? I think it's great. Oh. It's, we're having a great time it's here. It's great. That's the kind of up, up optimistic um, uh, like attitude that's just kept you in the industry for so long, Shane. Yeah. Yeah, if by the industry you mean the, the guts of a dinosaur, yeah. yeah. Can you tell, tell us how it actually happened? Well, we were swallowed separately. Uh, yeah. Madeline's got a funny story. Funny story. I was walking down the street just minding my own business and a dinosaur just swallowed me, but he didn't chew, Jen. He didn't chew. Mm. Classic story. Wow, that's so great. And um, I can see that there are these awesome bones here that you guys have in... 
That oh, sorry. <laughs> We're inside, sorry, <laughs> sorry. You guys are inside the dinosaur inside guts and not inside yeah. the studio. I don't know how it's possible oh, for my you goodness. To sorry, I totally gave them. it away, guys. Oh. I'm a terrible actor. Yeah. Okay, well, you can look at me now, I guess, that I've given it away. How are you finding it in the dinosaur guts? Well, um, Shane, <laughs> you were right there. Actually, um, I actually didn't notice you there. Oh, really? I yeah, have, yeah. I'm very quiet. Yeah, you had your head turned the I other did, way. I so did. I just thought it was like Concentrating. a, a hairball the dinosaur had swallowed. Yeah. yeah, you look so well for two people who've been trapped inside the bowels of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I know. Well, I did cut up my pants, so that's to give theatrical effect that Wonderful. I've been in there for a while. Wonderful. Also, I'm a big Hulk fan, Incredible Hulk. Ah, oh, so. green. Green. Yeah. Green. What She's have you been doing to keep yourselves amused while you're inside? Oh, uh, well, Madeline's got a thing. Got a best friend, Jen. Oh. Called Boney. Hello, Boney. Oh, hi, Jen. Oh, my goodness. She yeah. speaks. She's doing the voice. What? He can't no. talk. I'm uh, very good. Doesn't even have a mouth. Boney. Yeah. Every time I play a game with her, I always win. Well, what game do you play with Boney? Oh, who am I? We love that. Oh. Who am I? Boney. Yeah, we know. Wow. What's inside Boney? Like just another series of Marrow. <laughs> Marrow. <laughs> Marrow. Wow. And newspaper. Oh, like a paper mache. Maybe. Maybe. Like a marrow mash. I don't want to give away all of Boney's secrets. I'm I sorry. think you just did. I it's think that's the entirety of geez. what you need to know about Boney. All it's straight from Boney's sensitive. Wikipedia page. If you wow, want to you look guys have up. set that up. Yeah. Mm. What's it been like performing to like people who are shorter than the usual adult audience? Melbourne people. Oh, no, I meant children. Sorry, I oh. should have called them by their proper name. <laughs> yeah. What's it like oh, yeah. working with children these days? They've been really fun. Yeah. Been really fun. One time this girl was so excited that she did a tumble like off her chair, but she was fine. She <laughs> the didn't ambulance cry. guys laughed and laughed. Yeah, wow. That, good. that is. Uh, I think we've, it's sort of like we've found our audience. I'm pretty much doing the same material I've been doing as a normal comedian. Like as an adult. Yes. yes. But yep. now it's like. I've uh, realised that I've been pitching to eight-year-olds all along. <laughs> you found your true calling. Realized. That's ah, fantastic. That's why I'm doing so terribly. Because <laughs> Madeline, you're still doing a show for adults as yeah. well as doing kids' shows, is that right? Yeah, with a lot of nudity. Are you serious? No, it sounds like when you say adult show. Oh, I'm sorry, like, sorry, <laughs> sorry. No, I was like, you. I don't know, She's you're always pushing the edges. Show. It's always like a kids' show or an adult It's actually show. The, the same show, <laughs> just done in the nude. Yeah. Exactly That's fantastic. Show. So if people want to catch the adult show, the adult version, the, the adult Madeline, it's yeah. Adeline Schmadeline. It, yeah, Madeline Schmadeline Trades Hall, 7.15. That's fantastic. Yeah. And that's playing until... The end, the bitter end. The, the 19th, 19th of April is what we're calling the bitter end, not the end of the world. Well, it could be the end of the world. That is really cool. Well, know. we're going to find out in a bit what you've been doing actually inside the guts of the dinosaur. But first of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching. And if you're keen to see who's coming up next week on About Tonight, the host is Nina Oyama with guests uh, Jekyll and James from Sydney who will be the house band, Helen Kapalos and all the way from the UK, Phil Wang. So guys, um, I know you're very productive all the time and you probably keep working regardless of which stomach you're in. Yeah. Do you guys want to show us a little bit of how you've been whiling your time and, and that kind why don't, of thing? Why don't you get your book? All right, I do have a lot of dinosaur facts. You gave some information. I would like to give some of my information as well. You can just. It's an educational there. show. Um, so now we've got the funding. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I've got this book on dinosaur facts. Um, I knew that was going to happen. Okay, dinosaur facts. Uh, so here's the first one. Um, the oh, I didn't know this. Dinosaurs are, are allergic to tomatoes. If you were to give a tomato to a dinosaur, they would sneeze for three days. That's not. That's true. Tomatoes are angiosperms. They evolved after the Jurassic period. So probably dinosaurs didn't even come in contact with them, let alone be allergic. It's called science, Madeline. Anyway, dinosaurs love umbrellas. Did you know that? Yeah, they love them so much that if you were to give them an umbrella, they would be your best friend for life. <laughs> Who wrote this book? Like a professor. <laughs> oh, and then there's this one. <gasps> the oldest dinosaur to have ever d had a dinosaur driving license was called Ethel P. Johnson. She's 100 and It's a colouring book. Yeah, It's no, a colouring it's book. It's not like... It is, there but... There is no information in here. I remember them from a book from before, like a while ago. Oh, did you? Right? Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. Well, here's, here's something I remember from another dinosaur book I read. Oh, did you know, did you know that the reason dinosaurs are extinct yeah. 
is because Madeline stinks. Yeah, in fact, Madeline's a big smelly McBum Bum from Smelburn. She shops at Smelburn Central. Mmm. That's not yummy. even true. No, well, what about this one, Shane? Oh, Shane is the reason that dinosaurs developed wings to fly away from him because he's a bummy bum bum boo bum bum Tell me, bum. That is only half true. Yeah, well, good. Oh, look, oh, oh, did you know Madeline is a freak? And she has three arms. Oh, did you know that, Jen? What a weirdo. Three arms. Oh, feral. Three. <laughs> How did you know about my third arm? <laughs> what is that? It's my third arm. It's just my baby arm. What's a baby arm? Shane, don't you know about baby arms? No. When you're little, you have little baby arms, right? And they drop off when you get older and you grow big new adult arms. Now that's baby teeth, baby <laughs> teeth. You don't have little baby arms that drop off. I think I know. I got a lot of money from the arm fairy for this one. Yeah. Do you like her? No, not, like not particularly. Hi, Shane. Oh, I want to be your friend. Ah, pat you on the face. Hi. Oh, brush your hair back, Shane. Oh, mm. nice luscious hair, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Her name's Amy. So. You should have called her Army. It's not a joke, Shane. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Anyway. It's really brought the mood down. It really has. It makes me think of something we could do to pass the time. Um, I, I could play a song for you. What do you got? Oh, I've got a really sad song, so maybe I shouldn't do it. All right. Okay. Oh, but it's really beautiful. Oh, well, if it's beautiful. Okay, yeah, right. Go. All right. So one of those, a, yeah. who, is it Taylor Swift? No, it's not Taylor Swift. It's more beautiful than Taylor Swift. I'm I know. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. So don't get too emotional and cry, okay? All right. That is that not bad. a good song. You want to hear a good song? <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, here's one I do about a mango. Ever eaten a mango? Yeah. Oh, well, you'll I've like eaten this. A mango before, Hit right? it. My house band, the <laughs> Shaneettes. <laughs> My hands are too sticky, can't touch anything. I got the mango hands. I can't touch the tap for I get the sticky tap. I got the mango hands. I can't pet my cat or I get the sticky cat. I got the mango hands. I can't pick my nose or I get the sticky booger. Oh, mango hands! The only thing I can pick up is is another mango! With my mango hands. This song goes for eight minutes, man. They don't build them like they used to. <laughs> <laughs> 